I, I, I get so happy when I hear people interested in learning. Just by that interest in learn, reading an article, watching a documentary, following a journey, whenever the time is right, whenever they decide it is okay to try it, makes me so happy when people just get started with a journey because I know two weeks later, they're gonna be in love with it. Hey, welcome to this week's episode of the Human Enhancement Podcast. This is your host, Jeffrey Wu, and I'm excited to re-welcome back Sumaya Kazi. So we had a conversation in September of 2016, so about a year and a half ago. And it was just at the, I would say, the start of intermittent fasting and in, in your early you know, reports and data around your own personal fasting becoming a, a bit of a phenomenon. And fast forward a year and a half, You've been on the Today Show. Your Medium post talking about fasting has like, what over six hundred thousand views. Yeah. The organic search trends on Google <laughs> are just up and to the right. Yeah, I mean, I just curious to hear the journey for you personally from for over the last couple of years. Well, it's definitely been crazy. Thank you again for having me back. I mean, I remember a year and a half ago when we sat here and talked about this. It was such a different time than what it feels like today and how much uh, people are talking about intermittent fasting, how much interest there is, what's going on. Um, just to backtrack, a year and a half ago, I was still very early in my journey. You know, I had an, a year in under my belt, uh, but still very much in the early experimentation, figuring things out, getting into a routine, learning kind of the ins and outs of it. Um, when I had first started intermittent fasting, at the time, IF was, IF for short, uh, was really more focused in kind of the weightlifting community from what I saw. So it was a lot of, especially men talking about it. It was, anytime I Googled it, it was guys with abs, people just like <laughs> getting down to their body fat. You would hear some celebrities here and there talk about it as like a, a routine to get fit. Like Terry Crews and Hugh Terry, Jackman yeah, talk exactly, about it pretty yeah. broadly. Yeah, yeah and I, I love how Terry Crews talks about it, and we can go more into detail about kind of the celebrity kind of influence in this world, but um, it was intimidating for me, you know? I, and I come from a background of weightlifting. I, I was in the gym four or five times a week, and so I wasn't kind of intimidated by that per se. It was just more like there weren't other stories that I could relate to. And so I decided I would, you know, give it a shot, try it out. It was always very data driven. So I kept a spreadsheet and just kind of tracked it every day. And then... What was the trigger for you initially? Was it just like people seem to have good results and I'm adventurous? No, it was desperation, Jeff. It okay. was, it wasn't, you know, I was at this time building my company. I was stressed out. Every, every positive or negative thing that happened in my life, it was equated to my like the scale going up so something amazing could happen in my company and i would have gained weight and something terrible could have happened and i'm still gaining weight and so i was getting really unhappy about that trend um i had tried everything i had done jenny craig i had done weight watchers i was meal prepping i was in the gym four or five times a week and you know while all of those things did i did see a difference you know i won't you know i won't say that those weren't great things um it didn't last enough reverted it, it didn't, back to the mean it, like the yeah, trend reverted it, it, the yo-yo okay. that's what it felt like i felt like i was part of the craziest wildest yo-yo and everything was really just discouraging and so i had heard about intermittent fasting i had started researching it i had watched this bbc documentary called eat fast live longer by michael mosley which i highly recommend if anybody's interested in watching it and uh, i was like okay there's some science behind it so this isn't like this kind of craziness, but there still wasn't a lot of information about how it related to women. And then a good friend of mine, uh, Daniel Odio, had done intermittent fasting himself, and he actually had the story of he lost weight. And it wasn't like, hey, I'm doing this to get abs. It was like, I'm doing this for my better health, and I lost weight. And so that was kind of the, the, like the actual push into actually giving it a go. Uh, and I have not looked back since. It's been an amazing, amazing lifestyle. It's not even a journey anymore for me. It's absolutely a lifestyle now. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most important things around IF is that we talk about crash diets or juice fads or all these sort of these quick interventions. So, you know, you hear the stories about people trying to fit into their wedding dress or beach body for the summer and they yeah. do something for like two weeks of like not eating. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, you know, like yourself, I think a lot of people in our community and perhaps some of our listeners here are, are planning to do this for the rest of their life. And yeah. I think it is one of those sustainable 
routines. I think that's been the biggest surprise for me because you know when I when, when you jump into anything new, you you hope that it's something that'll that you can stick with. But right. in the back of your mind, you're like, ah, I've done so many of these, and a lot of the people that I talk to, especially with intermittent fasting, have that same fear, and it's it's a it's a common fear. I think what appeals to them is when I talk about my story and I, I share my journey with intermittent fasting as much as possible on Snapchat, on Instagram, especially stories, on Facebook, wherever I can. And I just show the day to day. And the more people that see that and watch it, they realize, oh, this is actually something that can fit into my normal. Right. Also, when I first started intermittent fasting, I lost about 55 pounds in seven months. And that was without me stepping foot in a gym. And I think that's really important to know. You know, people think, oh, I have to pair this with intense workouts and you can you know people do but if that's not your normal right now you you don't have to to see results you know you can always layer right. that in later so i know you do an alternate day fast so basically yes. doing three 36 hour or approximately 36 hour fasts a week yeah did you just a... jump into that initially or did you experiment to land to this current routine uh it sounds crazy but yeah i, I kind of just started with a 36 hour fast so i actually do a modified version of what's called alternate day fasting. So alternate day fasting is where you're fasting every other day. It's typically three days a week um, and you're you're eating four days a week. Um, with alternate day fasting, you're typically allowed, you know, like, or encouraged to eat a 500 calorie kind of meal. Uh, I actually don't. So I, I aim for zero. Um, when I do help people get started with this schedule though, I tell them for those two weeks, you should use it as a crutch help you get adjusted, get into the mindset. And then after that, aim for zero as much as possible. Um, Cause that's where you see the real kind of the, the real amazingness of fasting is when, yeah. when you're, you know, fasting as much as you can during yeah. that period. But yeah, so I fast Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. Um, I kind of jumped into it. You know, I, I figured that any fasting schedule was gonna be challenging. Um, and so I, I kind of committed to at least getting through the first two weeks, no matter what with that schedule and then making a decision after that. And then after that, I gave myself a month and then three months. And then before you knew it, it just became rhythm. It's it, just part of daily life. Absolutely. I would say the first, the first week felt like an experiment. The first, um, two weeks or two months felt like a, a habit. You know, I was getting into the habit of doing it. I mean, did it suck in the beginning? Cause I know that for most people, it's just like, like you're just yeah. hangry, you're tired. It's horrible. No, it's not horrible. I'll take the word back horrible. It is challenging. Yeah. It is not easy. Fasting is not, especially when you first get started, it's not meant to be easy. You know, your body is so used to eating and most of us overeating and we find comfort in that food. So a lot of emotional eating, a lot of stress eating, a lot of just eating while we're binge watching TV. It's, it's so part of our day to day now. Um, so your body is not happy when you start fasting, but it's something magical happens after you get through your first, even first fast or your second fast. Um, the mental hurdles that you're going through, I tell everybody it's, it's more of a mind over stomach battle. Your body actually has more than enough food in its system, especially if you eat well the day before you're fasting. So your body does not need the food when you feel like you're hungry. If anything, that's actually when it's starting to like start some burn some fat, which is what we want it to do. Um, after the first week, it gets so much easier, so much easier after two weeks, even easier than that. Yeah. I, I think really, I think mind over matter is, is really rings true. And, and to me, it means that we have a culture of expecting to eat three times a day. And if you look at the history of why that even, you know, why that even exists, that's yeah. a relatively uh, you know, recent phenomenon with the industrial revolution. Yeah, so it is absolutely. kind of like, can we here and you know, the fasters out there help change and update culture? Like our eating yeah. patterns should change. It's I not... feel like culture is absolutely shifting. Yeah. I've noticed that. Yeah. So my brother and my sister fast. Um, my teammates fast. Uh, my best friends fast. My parents know about our fasting schedule, so when we go home, things happen around that. <laughs> um, people schedule meetings with me based off of my fasting schedule. They know it already, so they know to schedule coffees on certain days or invite me to, you know, evening events on my my eat days. Um, I work out of an office right now where there are more people who are fasting than not fasting, and That's so awesome. now it's like when people want to do lunch, they'll send out a message saying. Uh, who in the office isn't fasting today that wants to go get lunch. <laughs> so it absolutely is a culture shift. I mean, it's not pervasive everywhere, obviously, right now, but it's starting to like... Were there tipping points over the last year and a half 
was or was there just a slow shift or was there just like a step function i don't know you know it's 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 interesting because i so i was building a company for seven years and decided to exit and shut down that company in like october november of last year and decided to give myself time to just focus on my health and so part of that was just relaxing taking a step back and just you know focusing on myself so as a result of that i was you know posting on social media oh i'm fasting today i just had more time to do it so i was posting here's my lacroix here's my coffee right. here's you know and every time i messaged i would get a few hundred messages back and i didn't notice just, that before uh, I, I, just right at the at the at the at the when you just started just right from the beginning not from when i started fasting i think when I started fasting, I was sharing updates of right. like my weight loss progress and stuff like that. And people were definitely curious, but I wasn't getting the hundreds of day questions. So once it became like a regular thing, it's like, oh, people came to expect you to be a fasting inspiration or a fasting teacher of some sort. I think what happened is, so this is what I've noticed. Two years ago, it was very much weightlifting and fasting. And yeah. that was a community. And that's where all the press and buzz and conversations were happening. I would say like early to mid part of last year, a lot of the conversations and still we're seeing conversations on body hacking, biohacking, right. you know, like people that are really utilizing intermittent fasting as a way to improve their health, but in different ways. I, you know, as we talked about it, my initial inspiration was I, I need to lose weight. I was obese. I was unhappy. I was pre-diabetic. I was I had issues with sleep apnea. I, my, both my parents are diabetic. I was, you know, desperate. Right. And in the last half of last year, and I would say even now, so much information is coming out around intermittent fasting and weight loss. And intermittent fasting and preventing chronic illnesses. Also and for insulin resistance. I'm sure. I'm curious. Have you been measuring your blood metabolic panels? I have not, but I want to okay. actually. So now I'm at a point right now where I'm so fascinated by this. I yeah. genuinely am so fascinated about the research that's coming out about it, the longevity science that's coming out about it. I've now witnessed tens and thousands of people who have either read my guide or have messaged me or follow along on the journey who have lost 10, 20, 100 plus pounds. Right. And their doctors are so happy, they're off medications, they're feeling good, you know, and, and I, I'm, I'm, you know, my own story I was sold, but now that I've seen it and I've witnessed it in so many people, I'm just, I'm fascinated by it. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. you're an admin in our WeFast group and I, I see am. that every time you post something like hundreds of likes and like, you know, 50 comments. And you I see know. stories of people like reducing their insulin intake if they're type 2 diabetic. Yeah. People are posting, you know, lost 50 pounds. Yeah. It is it is inspiring. It's really amazing. I feel like the reason why I think um, the community has kind of been being built around this is I think one, you know, intermittent fasting is free. There's there's no like program that you have to sign up for. Anybody can be successful with it. Um, you save money when you do it because you're not eating as much food. Right. There's so many other benefits that you don't realize when you get started. The difficulty in it is the start. It is the getting started. What is the right schedule for you? It's, it's a beautiful thing because there's so much flexibility in intermittent fasting, but what's the right schedule for you? Everybody's got different lifestyles. They might have kids at home. They might have, you know, they're on a plane all the time. They might have a grave, graveyard shift. What is the right schedule? How much should you be eating? You don't want to eat too little. You want to eat really well. You don't want to overeat. So figuring that out. And then most importantly, support. So having a group like the We Fast human support group is really helpful because you can then share what's happening, what's wrong. Like here's some pros, here's some cons. And, and you have a community that's kind of... Right. It's not just you yourself being kind of a crazy weird person there's like a lot of people like you no, out there it's the new normal so when people right. so people ask me questions uh, typically on snapchat or instagram or even facebook and i try my best to answer the questions you know and a lot of them are you know very common questions on what do you do what do you, do you have creamer in your milk or how does this affect your cycle or you know like there's just some common questions and um and then just knowing that there's somebody out there that's doing it with you is really helpful. Yeah. So a lot of people say that they fast with me. So because I share my journey day to day, people feel like they're fasting with me. And it's kind of a, a cool virtual experience to do. I want to ask about some of like the funny anecdotes and, and questions you get. But before that, I think to me, a, a, like a, a huge tipping point was seeing you on today's shit with Megyn Kelly. Right. This is a national. That was a crazy experience. You know, you know. <laughs> you know broadcast tv yeah and talking to millions of people so i will tell you something that a lot of people don't know about that story so i had just come so some context um 
in November, I had gotten bronchitis pretty bad. December, I started healing and decided to take a trip with my dad and my sister to Bangladesh, which is where my, my family is originally from. I haven't been there in seven years. Typically, when I'm sick, I don't fast. And also, you know, I, I will fast sometimes when I'm traveling or I'll kind of tweak my schedule. But for a trip like this, I decided not to because, one, I haven't seen my family in seven years. Travel's stressful and you're already sick. And also, yeah. I wanted to eat all the food. <laughs> I mean, like... I, I feel zero guilt about it. One of the, the beautiful things about fasting is you can proactively make decisions on when you're fasting, when you're not. And so this was a proactive decision that both my sister and I decided to take. So we had eaten all the food. It was amazing. I'm flying back. The day I get back, I'm super jet lagged, is when I get a message from the producers of the Today Show. They're like, hey, we're doing the segment on intermittent fasting. We've been trying to get a hold of you because uh, I wasn't checking any of my messages while I was abroad. Um, we want to do it this week. Can we fly you out today? And so I'm jet lagged, feeling amazing <laughs> from all the food that I ate, but definitely not in fasting mode, right. you know, by any means. And so part of me was like, maybe I'm not the best person <laughs> to be on national TV. And I, I shared this with a few of my girlfriends and one of my girlfriends had shared with me, she's like, Smile, I follow your journey because you aren't trying to represent yourself as the end goal Instagram model type person, which I would never be, by the way. I'm not saying I would, but I'm not that person. I talk about it as a journey. I talk about all the, the things that come up, the obstacles, family, shit that happens. Right. And um, I talk about how I get over it, you know, how I handle it, how I handle travel, how I make decisions. You know, I felt good knowing when I came back, I was going to get back into fasting and any weight that I'd gained eating all the amazing food in Bangladesh was going to disappear in like two weeks, you right. know, but going on national TV is a whole nother, whole nother thing. <laughs> so I had her in my head where she's like, you represent the woman that is on the journey and is looking towards making it part of their lifestyle. And so I was like, okay, I will go on the today show with that mindset and sharing my journey. And so you hop on a plane, yeah. you land in New York it was um and what like yeah tell us a story uh, okay so story. I, yeah i got these messages from multiple producers trying to get a hold of me like one was on linkedin one was on facebook they're trying to get a hold of me in different ways they're blasting you on all apparently channels. there's no easy email address for them to find me at so it's <laughs> all on social and then um we get on the call the producers wanted to learn a little bit more about my story they had read the guide so apparently the guide right now is the number one google result for intermittent fasting results and intermittent fasting weight loss. So if you type that in, Which that is pretty. I'm sure pretty big search volume there. It, it's crazy. It's, yeah. Well, if you look at Google Trends right now for intermittent fasting from 2004, it's right. like from here. I wrote my guide around here, and then in the last like half a year, it's like literal hockey stick moment yeah. right now. Yeah. And it doesn't look like it's going to be slowing down anytime because the science is coming out. Yeah. All the all the medical science and research is coming out right now, and so people are very. Yeah, we had Jason Fung come on a couple yeah. weeks ago. He has a new book coming out, Diabetes Code. Yeah. Um, I know that you. I don't know. If you, you can talk about potential book ideas, <laughs> perhaps, and tease at that. But um, yeah, no, no. Continue the story. So it, you yeah. know, so they had come across my guide. Um, they were doing a series of different kind of like weight loss strategies. They were featuring someone who uh, that does keto and lost 120 pounds doing that. So we were kind of back to back segments. Um, but they were like, yeah, it's happening tomorrow. We need to fly you out today. Apparently, we, we were there was a huge uh, snowstorm that was happening too. So my flights kept getting canceled Ooh. and they were getting really nervous. Yeah. So I got on one flight that was willing to fly to New York. Got it at 2 in the morning, woke up at 5.30 in the groom room by 7, 7.30 Brutal. for hair and makeup. And on live TV at 9 in the morning. So you were, I mean, you came out very eloquent and sharp. I mean, I mean, just realistically, were you like half delirious, like oh, in a yeah. dream? Like Jet what is lagged, going on? Uh, time zone issues. I didn't know what time <laughs> it was uh, at all. Um, but, you know, I, I was excited that intermittent fasting was going to be talked about. And, you know, I was a little nervous because... What I've noticed in the news is that people tend to sensationalize it. You know, while the content of the articles are usually decent, um, a lot of the headlines are like, is this starvation diet, you know, right, right for you? And it, it it's already geared to make it sound negative. And what I really loved about this segment with Megyn Kelly and the Today Show was it was really, really balanced. If anything, it was really positive. Right. Megan actually knew about intermittent fasting. She was 
fascinated by it. So even after the segment was done, she actually wanted me to stay back because she was like, I am interested in this. Can I ask you questions? Right. Which is great. So it wasn't just a segment just to do a segment. Do you think she's experimenting with it now? Um, I think she wants to. I think right. it's for her, you know, this, and I see this with like busy executives and people on the go. It's really hard when you're traveling and you have right. a family and stuff like that. So if somebody were to handhold and be like, this is what you should do and I'm going to walk you through it for a week, she would absolutely do it. And so the producers even said, we really want her to do it. And if she does, we want to bring you back to like <laughs> talk about it some more. But no, she was great. She was well-versed. She knew about it. She was really excited about like the longevity aspects of right. it, preventing chronic illnesses, like those components of it. Um, yeah, it was, it was, it was a really good segment. I think, you know, obviously I wish there was more time so we could talk more about it, uh, talk more about the schedules. Uh, but you know, I, th I, I thought the segment went well. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's also, I think it is, I think you mentioned it was, it's great that it was done in a fair balanced way. Cause I think oftentimes in media, just like chasing the headlines, either like everything's the best thing ever, or it's like the worst thing yeah. ever. And there's like nothing in between. The I think, thing, yeah, the other thing I yeah. noticed is I've seen journalists who try it for a day. That's they, it. They and they're like, oh, it's day. horrible. I can't do it. Yeah, and they write an article about it. And it's, <laughs> it's they're writing it while they're hangry. Of course you're going to hate it. Yeah. You're not happy right now. But give it two weeks. Give it three weeks. Um, actually, uh, maybe like three or we three weeks ago, and you guys were interviewed by them too, but Bloomberg. Um, yes. The managing technology editor for Bloomberg and a reporter came to my house to interview me for their podcast on intermittent fasting. And yeah. apparently, um, the managing editor had read my guide a month previous and started fasting and was doing uh, like a 20 hour fast, four hour eat window, a few days during the week. And then the reporter was like, I'm gonna also try it as well. And so I just like the fact that he had been doing it for at least a month and yeah. was super well versed in it, talked the talk, knew what I was feeling when I was talking about certain things. Um, that's cool yeah I remember I think I saw you post about it on social and Selena the reporter was yeah. in our office a, a few days beforehand so I think when I was talking to her she was kind of like yeah, I don't know about it. I don't know about it, but maybe after talking to you, she's like, "Oh, okay." Yeah, I, I mean, look, it's not. You know, I never. I am not the person that will tell people you should do it. If you look at any of my social media posts, I I'm just living my life. I'm doing it for myself. I'm seeing the health benefits from it. Uh, people who get curious and are interested to learn more, I'm happy to share that information. And if people want my support or want that extra hand holding, I'm there as well, you know? So it's, it's if you choose to do it, fantastic. If you don't, the right time, or if you find something that works for you, amazing. Yeah. Um, I just find that of all the things that I have tried, this is the one thing that sticks, the one thing that I see measurable results with consistently, is the most flexible, um, and just it just works. I think the one thing that just amazes me with your generosity of time. I mean, it sounds like you get hundreds of questions a day. I mean, I'm sure a lot of them are the same. You know, uh, what are the most FAQ questions? Yeah, so the funny thing about all of this is I do answer a lot of questions, but I've never written anything more than the guide. The guide is literally the only posted content I've ever shared on intermittent fasting. Everything else has been 24-hour disappearing snapchats right. instagrams that sort of thing our podcast is probably the only other thing actually <laughs> now that i think about it um and the today show and well yeah and the today show but yeah i mean i i'm starting to figure out how to share more content um and so the most the most frequently asked questions <laughs> is always about my coffee i get so many questions about my <laughs> coffee um like what's in it what's in it so here's the thing there's two camps when it comes time to fasting. There's a clean fasting community, which basically says zero. Like you, anything that's above zero is breaking your fast and that's it. And that means anything in your coffee, does, it doesn't work. Chewing gum for some in the clean fasting community doesn't work. Even drinking sparkling water does not work for that. I'm part of a different camp. I'm very supportive of people that do that style of fasting. If that works for you, amazing. I'm in a flexible style of fasting. Um, I don't even know if that, that's a term that exists. I just call that for myself. Uh, I do 36 hour fasts. And when I first watched the Michael Mosley documentary on 5-2, they had allowed for a 500 calorie crutch. So I use that if I absolutely need it. Um, but I find things that make fasting a lifestyle for me. So for me, again, personal decision, I'm not advocating this for everybody. I do put some creamer in my coffee 
it's minimal, but it gets me through my day. I just am not, I've never been a black coffee drinker. I don't consume any foods. Um, I drink LaCroix heavily. Uh, a lot of people think I advertise for LaCroix. I don't. I just like it. Just a fan of sparkling water? It's, yeah, yeah. you know, the sparkling water is my best friend for fast days. The carbonation makes me feel full. And I'm also not somebody that drinks a lot of water. So I'm actually drinking a lot more water, not just because of LaCroix, but because I'm fasting. So I drink a lot more water, yeah. which is a huge benefit. Um, I used to have a terrible Diet Coke habit. Um, yeah. And I would drink it all the time. And now I don't have that craving as much. I, I definitely can get that same kind of feeling with LaCroix. Um, but sparkling water, tea, coffee. So yeah, I, I post a photo of my coffee and people freak out because they're like, you have stuff in your coffee. And then the next day I'm posting a weight loss graph and they're like, and you're seeing results. And I'm like, yeah, because, you know, the calories are minimal. I'm fasting for a very, you know, an extended period of time. I'm doing it consistently and I found what works best for my lifestyle. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think it is just a sustaining a fast, right? You can, if you just like don't eat for, I don't know, 72 hours and you're doing it very, very well or clean yeah. and you never do it again. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's not really People helpful. who do 16 hour fast, here's my advice. I... You know, again, minimal is okay if it helps you get through it. But the shorter the fast, the more uh, of an effect something that you consume in your body will have. Just do the math on that. And right. so the longer the fast, the more you have a little bit more leeway. The shorter the fast, the more you shouldn't. So if I was doing a 16-hour fast, I'd probably stick to tea and water and uh, only have coffee if I could do a block, which I probably couldn't. So I would find other ways and other strategies to get around it. Right. Getting to 24 hours, 36 hours, that's when I give myself a yeah. little more leeway. I mean, there's like, yeah, I think there's a lot of variations. I think there's also variations around fat fasting or keto fasting. Mm -hmm. And the theory there is that, you know, sugars and proteins trigger mTOR, which is a nutrient sensing pathway more yeah. aggressively than fat. Yeah. So, you know, something I've been experimenting with the last couple of weeks is, you know, using heavy whipping cream, which is like all fat mm -hmm. as, a, as a way to start, uh, yeah. uh, you know, a day with coffee and just, you know, definitely more calories and satiating than perhaps a little bit of creamer, but yeah. different variations. And, but I love that about fasting. And I think we're still so early in intermittent fasting as like a, a space that I think the more experimentation that someone can do for themselves, the better, you yeah. know, figuring out what kinds of foods you want to break your fast with. Um, I actually, I remember I typically break my fast with like eggs and avocado and chicken apple sausage and usually it's heavier protein. I remember breaking my fast the other day where I had like pancakes and syrup and something and my body actually had a, a pretty adverse reaction to it because it was just like too much sugar too quickly and I was, I feel my body yeah, like, is so... Yeah, like buzzing on sugar almost. Yeah, it was it, like my, I am so sensitive to foods now, not in a bad way. I just, I feel a connection to my body in a strange way. Before I, I would eat food and it was kind of numb. Right. Now when I have something, food, alcohol, whatever, I feel it in my system. I don't crave greasy food as much. I, you know, can tell when I'm dehydrated. I used to never be able to tell that. I'm just way more in tune. So I felt the sugar in my system. Yeah. And it was not a feeling that I wanted to have again. So the next time I broke my fast, I made sure it was, again, like more protein and stuff like that. And it's good reinforcement. Yeah. I'm curious that you have, you know, an FAQ, but what are some... Uh, like a random weird question or a funny questions. Oh, okay. Well, tell. so yesterday I posted, um, so I had poured my LaCroix out in a wine glass. I was fasting. I'm actually still fasting. I'm probably at 39 hours right now, 40 hours maybe. Uh, okay. I feel great by the way. I feel super high energy. I don't even feel hungry. <laughs> it's amazing how yeah. that happens. Anyway, so I poured out my LaCroix in this wine glass just for fun and I put a tea bag in it and I was like, oh, this is sparkling tea. This is amazing. And people went wild over it. And then I started getting questions and I had posted a video of how I did it. And people were like, how do you, how do you make sparkling <laughs> tea? So I thought that was really funny. Um, strange, I, you know, I don't think they're strange questions. I, I, I guess unintuitive questions. How about that? No, not, I mean, even the coffee question I thought was kind of amusing. Yeah. But here's the thing. This is the way I look at it. Intermittent fasting seems really scary for a lot of people. You know, people are really nervous. Oh, I'm, you know, I don't want to starve myself. What are people going to think? The social obstacles and social pressures. A lot of people are nervous to ask about cycles. I get a lot of questions on menstrual cycles. And is it normal to feel a certain way while you're fasting? Does it change your cycle? That right. sort of thing. Um, I get a lot of questions on what I eat. And then people freak out when I post photos of like pasta and pizza and french fries uh, because we're so used to thinking you have to eat a certain way and you have to restrict yourself constantly 
to lose weight or to be healthy. And sure, I, I restrict my timing on when I eat, but I'm not restricting the foods that I enjoy. So I don't actually do any kind of diet. I don't limit or restrict any kinds of foods. I still very much eat my French fries and um, I just don't have a huge appetite anymore. I can't, my mind might think I can have 20 tacos, but I could probably do maybe like three or four, disappointingly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, other questions that I get, I would say in like the last week, it's been um, like schedules. A lot of people are really stressed about what schedules to choose. A lot of people want to do my schedule, but are really nervous about trying it. And I tell them, you don't have to do my schedule. There's so many schedules right. out there. Let's find one that works for you. Um, exercise is a big one. Like, how do you how do you factor in exercise? People like to do everything all at the same time. And I tell them, don't. If you have not been exercising the last month before introducing intermittent fasting, do not do it right now. Right. Do IF, get that into a habit, feel good about it. And then I call them experiments. Layer in exercise as an experiment. If you've been exercising, then IF is your experiment. Then layer in intermittent fasting with your workout schedule. Um, crazy I don't I don't I don't know I don't any anytime I get a question that seems repetitive or seems a little obvious I try to step in their shoes and think about why they're asking and then it doesn't seem as obvious a lot of it is a cultural thing I get messages I mean, from just people like around the world people, right mm -hmm. like I think it is kind of like schedule is it dangerous yeah it's gonna affect me in a weird way yeah cycles you know. or workouts also I hear so I hear from a lot of groups of people that I think has been really interesting I hear from a lot of um, nurses uh, people who do graveyard shifts are mm. always on their feet. I hear from a lot of stay-at-home moms or new moms who are dealing with new bodies and trying to figure them their lives out with a crazy schedule. Um, I hear from a lot of people who are busy professionals and on the go. They're at the office and they're constantly being hit by meals and bad choices and food. And like require, like happy hours are a requirement oh, or something. Oh, absolutely. And so there's all these like groups of people that I, I see are like struggling. They're trying to find something that can work with their schedule. And so much of it is, is just figuring out the social obstacles and how to get around it. Um, I actually am experimenting with something outside of myself a couple weeks ago. I get so many questions and now I can't answer all of them and I want to be really thoughtful in my answers. And um, I've also been noticing a trend where people need that kind of extra support or are craving that. So I decided to do a challenge. So I do, a, I, didn't, I didn't even know what to call them. It's like a 30 day intermittent fasting challenge and a 12 week lifestyle challenge. I haven't even posted this anywhere. It was an Instagram story that lasted 24 hours. I got about 500 messages in 24 hours. Oh. And uh, I just told people, if you're interested in doing this, uh, I will help you get set up with your schedule. I will walk you through it and you'll be part of like a Facebook group where you're going to actually be held accountable. So unlike other groups out there, it's not about like staying there permanently. It's literally only people that are actively doing the challenge that are checking in every single day, asking questions. And I'm learning a lot just by having that small cohort of like really, really motivated people. Yeah. Motivated, but also just they're dealing with, a lot of them are different segments of people yeah. like stay at home moms that have to deal with cooking for their families during the day and food being in their face all yeah. the time or people that are dealing with the, the snowstorm and being stuck at home and equating being stuck at home with binge eating and binge watching TV right. uh, messages from people who are at work and they, they have their schedule and they're good and they're committed and then all of a sudden their work is taking them to like a surprise party and all you can eat food and a baseball game. So all these stories, it's like, it's, it's not fasting is hard and challenging the first week or two, and that's going to be natural for everybody. What is the challenging after that part is how do you fit it into your life? Right. How do you handle the obstacles without feeling guilty? How do you incorporate this into your lives without offending other people and their lives? You know, Have it's... you ever felt like you've offended people? I mean, I think it's a concern that one fears, but it doesn't actually reflect in reality. I mean, I've had some, I've been to dinners where I just like was sipping some tea and people are eating like the seafood smorgasbord. And I was yeah. like, I'm, I'm okay. Yeah. You know, I'm not actually, I think you had a, a social event at your place recently and I showed up and I was yeah, fasting. Yeah, you weren't, yeah, you weren't eating. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> here's the thing. It. I feel like people are more concerned about it than they should be. And it's easier said than done. Um, you have to go through the exercise of having what you think is an uncomfortable conversation. And once you've had it once or twice, it gets so much easier. Yeah, so, you realize that like, people don't, don't care, care slash respect it. Like, oh, yeah, cool. you know, like, of course you're going to have the yeah. one once in a while people that are going to be like, 
that sounds terrible, this is bad for you type person. Right. Those are inevitable. But, um, you know, when I first got started, I would tell people, yeah, I'm fasting for my health. And uh, I'm happy to join you for this lunch meeting. I won't be joining as long as you don't mind. I don't mind. Yeah. And they're like, oh, usually when you add for your health, people just assume it's like a doctor recommended something. <laughs> so they don't really ask. Yeah. Um, if I mention the words intermittent fasting, it's definitely a conversation starter. And by the end of the meeting, they will likely start fasting. <laughs> my experience. Um, no, but after a couple conversations, I, you know, I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to be fasting that day. I don't mind. Or maybe we can meet up for coffee. So yeah, that yeah. sounds great. And people are super respectful. They're intrigued by it. They're happy that you're focusing on your health. You know, if anything, it's a good thing. Um, I'm noticing people that are part of this challenge group that they're going home for spring break or for Easter and they're giving their family a heads up. They're actually letting their parents know in advance, I'm fasting on these two days just want to let you know and their parents have been super supportive they're actually planning things around that um wow. and th it's a huge win i mean that's one of the biggest obstacles yeah how do you see this unfolding in the future i know that you know i think a, a, a little crescendo was with the today show but it sounds like you have so many opportunities for other media opportunities potentially books tv film yeah, you're running this challenge with 500 people out of a 24-hour shout out. Yeah. Like how do you digest? I mean, I and I think it's very generous of your time to be doing this for so many people. Yeah. How do you see this scaling? How do you see this? Uh, you know, what does the next year look like? I mean, we're gonna have the same conversation another year and a half, <laughs> hopefully sooner than that. But um, well, so to clarify, 500 people uh, signed up. I've accepted 50 people, okay. and we're like doing some small rollouts because I'm learning with this as well, you okay. know. And, but um, I don't know, Jeff. This is it's been kind of a wild ride. You know, if somebody were to have asked me what I'd be doing this year, I could not have predicted this. I mean, last year I was building a marketing enterprise and automation company, and did not know what 2018 was going to hold for me truly, you know, right. and it was scary and it was okay. It was, it was like, I'm going to give myself some time to, you know, figure things out. And it was in the absence of that, where I was just spending more time on social and posting a little bit more on intermittent fasting when every time I would post, I would get another hundred, 200, 300 messages. And because I was answering it, I was getting more questions. And so it just started snowballing. Um, I mean, how, so you're like on your phone for like hours a day. I mean, I can't, uh, <laughs> basically what I've been doing right now is, um, every time I post on social media, right. I usually get, you know, messages back. I will pick the questions that I feel like I haven't answered yet and answer and then screenshot it and post it. Um, on Instagram, they have these highlights at the top. Mm. So I have an IF Q and A, so you can actually go through there and see all the answers that I've are the questions that I've answered um, and like my progress I have all my weight graphs on there um, so you know there's stuff there if I can not answer it right away I'll let them know where they can get it um, I try my best uh, try to put together like more content right. FAQs in terms of like what's gonna happen with me this year I don't know I mean if somebody were to ask me are you gonna like build your career around this I don't even know how to answer that. I mean, intermittent fasting is a lifestyle for me. It's so much part of my life. I absolutely love, enjoy helping people and supporting people. And I think that's what's really motivating me to spend more time in doing this. Um, but I, I don't know. This is, Baby steps. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm saying yes to all the opportunities. <laughs> yeah. So if there is an interview opportunity, I say yes, because it's an opportunity for me to share my story that can connect with hopefully one more person that can feel like there's hope and there is a way out or a way to find, um, you know, a way to hit their goals and, and feel more happiness in their lives. So I really enjoy that part of it. Um, it's also, I think, experimenting. So, you know, for our podcast listeners based in San Francisco, we're co-hosting an event together yeah. where Sumaya is leading a intermittent fasting workshop. I'm excited about that. I, you know, we get so many questions and I think that there's something to be said about seeing people in person seeing that this is a part of their life, talking about it. I mean, the more you talk about it, the more it feels like it's part of your life, you know? And and the more people you talk to, the more you realize this is this could be my new normal. This isn't as difficult as it sounds. It sounds difficult when you hear about it. As soon as you hear the basics, it's so much easier to adopt, I promise you. It's, it's just getting that over that hurdle. And so this workshop that we're gonna be doing is really about that. It's 
what is intermittent fasting? Let's talk about the history of it because intermittent fasting is not new, by the way. It has been around for thousands of years. Right. It's part of every major religion. Now there's just a term behind it, and more importantly, there's science that's backing it up. That's the, that's the biggest difference. So we're going to talk about the history. We're going to talk about the science of it. And I think you're also just doing a good job with metrics, right? I think it's like you actually have data mm-hmm. over a long period of time, which is like not fun to do. Just kind of like yeah. mark your weight or other, or other metrics that matter. Yeah, the and challenge it, group, actually, yeah. we uh, I gave them the spreadsheet that I use. Yeah. And I'm like, look, everybody doesn't have to do this, but if you want to, I can actually help troubleshoot. Because the data is actually a really great storyteller. You can actually see how your body handles, you know, different schedules and the results. And if, if you're plateauing a certain week, I can look at the numbers and I can kind of make a suggestion. And usually by the following week, it's like you're done with the plateau. Um, but the data is really amazing. And I think that the more we can track and the more we can experiment and the more we can share, you know, yeah. it's just a beautiful so thing. So what are some of the key things you're tracking? I'm actually curious. Yeah, so I'm not at the level of you are in terms of you know checking ketone levels. I actually want to though, um, we and can, I feel we, like we can get some. We can show you. Yeah, uh, I want to do that. I feel like I want to step it up yeah. with my own metrics because uh, what I want to do is I want to start experimenting myself. I've kind of kept a schedule that I knew that worked for me, and I want to now start experimenting and seeing how things affect my day to day, like how I feel, how I, you know, like how it affects me. Um, you know, like for example, I've never tried keto. I don't know that that's something that I would probably do long term, but I'm willing to experiment with it for like maybe two to four weeks just to see how my body handles it. Right. Um, again, for me, like I try not to be restrictive, so as flexible as I can, but an experiment sounds great for me. Uh, but yeah, so right now what I, 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 I weigh myself daily. I don't recommend this for everybody. I weigh myself daily because I track daily and I have a spreadsheet and I recognize that after an eat day, I will absolutely see a gain on the scale. Super normal. It's not fat. Right. It is just the food in my system that has not yet been digested or processed. Um, so I, I'm not sensitive to seeing the scale go up and it goes up every other day. Yeah. And then after a fast day, so I might go up maybe half a pound or a pound after an eat day. And then I'll usually go down like two pounds to two and a half pounds after a fast day. And then, you know, so it's like a little bit of like a, yeah, but, tr- but like, trending, down. Down. trending down. Yeah, yeah. But trending down. And then by my Friday fast, which is my last fast of the week, Saturday morning before I break my fast is my lowest weight of the week. And that's the way to compare week to week. Mm. Um, so I'm tracking that. I look at body fat percentage. Body fat percentages on scales are inaccurate, but I do look at it in terms of percentage going down. So like as long relatively. as I have a, Yeah, relatively. Yeah. Um, so this is like kind of like the, the, the electric sort of the... Yeah, it's just how my, I stand okay. on the scale. Okay. Yeah, I just, I use a weight guru scale and uh, uh-huh. it gives me body fat, it gives me bone density, it gives me water. I don't, again, focus too much on those numbers because scales are, are not accurate. 100% precise, yeah. but like it gives you a trend. It, it, exactly, I see a trend in data. So yeah. I, I measure that. Um, I'm not a huge calorie tracker these days. When I first got started, I was logging everything in my fitness pal. And I think it's important for anybody that's getting started, at least for the first two weeks to track, because we have a tendency to overeat. And so you wanna understand how much you're eating during your eat window, so you're not overeating or even under eating. I see people under eating, and that will actually stall their weight loss progress because their body wants to hold on to it right. instead of digest it. Which is counterintuitive. It is. Yeah. I, I sometimes will tell people, oh, I'm looking at how much you're eating. You should actually be eating 500 more calories in a day. They're like, what are you talking about? And they eat more. And then before you know it, the scale is just dropping. Right. Right. Um, so I do that. I track. So when I first got started, I was tracking calories pretty, pretty consistently. Um, and then I have like a one line observation on how I feel. Um, and I didn't realize that that would come in handy now because when people, again, I get questions on my cycle. How does fasting affect your cycle. I was like, wow, yeah, let me look back into my data. I looked back at all those weeks across a year and a half, two years, and I noticed, one, I lost more weight on those weeks hmm. during my cycle, which by the way, as women know, we usually gain a shit ton of weight the during bloating. that week. Bloating. Yeah. And then also it's not just bloating, we're unhappy and we're miserable. <laughs> so we're eating like I would be eating a box of Girl Scout cookies, no problem, I'd inhale it because you're craving sugar and warmth and comfort and so you end up eating greasy food and it's just, you know, you're dealing with all these different things when you're feeling uncomfortable and so 
I found that since I introduced fasting into my life, I would lose more weight week to week, like comparatively the week before the week after on that week. I felt less bloated. I had less cramps. I uh, felt better. I mean, I still felt uncomfortable. You know, you still have to deal with those issues when you're dealing with the cycle, but I felt great in comparison to before. And so when people, you know, initially when they are fasting and then they encounter their first cycle, they kind of freak out. And then they kind of have this moment of like amazingness afterwards where they're like, I survived my cycle yeah, and I didn't gain weight for the first time in my life. Um, and it's kind of awesome to watch that happen. Yeah. No, I mean, I think, again, I think one of the key things from just measuring things allows you to actually be informed whether then, and you can also just tell people and share to people Yeah. where it's like, I'm not just telling you subjectively, yeah. like you actually have data to back up. There's, you know, about. and look, everybody's in different places in their lives. I know women that are, you know, they have a really bad relationship with the scale. And if that's you, then you don't need to do it. I mean, measurements or like uh, body measurements are a really amazing, really amazing um, measure of progress. So I remember even just a few weeks ago, uh, I had stepped on the scale and from one week to the next, I was probably down like maybe half a pound or 0.2 pounds or something like that. It wasn't like my normal where I normally lose like two pounds, but I felt different. I felt lighter. I felt thinner. And so I had taken measurements mm. and I was down like four inches around my body mm. just from the previous week, a week and a half. And it just reminded me that it's not always on the scale. You just, you know, measurements, progress photos are another great way, you know, especially right. when you're getting started with your journey, you're probably not happy with how you look and that's okay. Take photos, save them, store them, keep them a secret. Two weeks later, take them again. Two weeks later, take them again. You are going to love the before and after. I promise you. Um, once but, you do yeah, fasting, and I think, I think that's a worth underlining that the ego or that self-confidence to look at the numbers and realize that you're not in a optimal state but you're working on it yeah but but i think i think you are a really good voice where like at a certain point you were not happy with those numbers but it it sort of destroy your confidence in yourself which is like okay yeah take a look realize that's what it is and move forward from there i I think think that's like um, that's like the healthy mindset i think it was really uncomfortable for me to share initially you know like sharing my weight in a public setting and talking about just how overweight I was, <laughs> it was really uncomfortable, but I'm so happy I did because I feel like the more transparent I was with my story, the more it resonated with people that were feeling the same way I felt when I got started. And so that that's what actually what motivates me to continue sharing my story. You know, I have off days, I have good days, I have things that I'm dealing with, life. And, you know, while I was do- going through the shutdown of my company, it was probably one of the hardest points in my life and I was still sharing kind of what, what I was going through and I think people can relate to not just the good times, it's the bad times that people need to see how you handle your lifestyle. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I, I get so happy when I hear people interested in learning. Just by that interest in learn, reading an article, watching a documentary, following a journey, whenever the time is right, whenever they decide it is okay to try it, makes me so happy when people just get started with a journey because I know two weeks later they're going to be in love with it two weeks two weeks two three weeks and I see the shift entirely in everyone's mentality I mean I, I think there's not much to say after that <laughs> um reach out to Sumaya I mean you're you're fa- you can be found on Instagram, Instagram Snapchat Sumaya Facebook Kazi on all the social platforms um Instagram I do stories Facebook um, I'm starting to create a community around it uh I have a YouTube channel I posted my very first YouTube video not really it was like a Snapchat video and I just uploaded it on YouTube um but I've been getting a lot of requests to do more videos so right. maybe I'll, I'll get your guys's help with some of that but yeah. um yeah that's, that's where you can find me. Or just social. find your medium post, Intermittent yeah. Fasting Weight Loss, the first result, the medium yep. post by Sumaya. Yeah. Or if you're in San Francisco, come see our event. So just come and literally meet Sumaya. And hear meet story. Team. And yes, I would love to meet anybody that's in town and wants to learn more. So come to the workshop, join us. I'll April be there 18th. to answer questions afterwards as well. Yeah, April 18th in downtown San Francisco. You can get tickets at go.hvmn.com slash fasting. Well, we'll see you guys next time. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks. And then as always, appreciate the feedback and loyalty and and, and support that you guys show us. We've opened up an email hotline for all you podcast listeners, podcast at hvmn.com. Both Zill, our producer, and I read every single one of those emails. And we had a nice flood of 
responses uh, over the last week. So uh, to, to give you a reminder on what that is, just give us a review on iTunes, take a screenshot of it, and send it over to podcast.human.com, and we'll hook you up with a free Sprint mini bottle. Uh, Sprint is our acute nootropic that helps you get into a flow state. Uh, but, but, but regardless of you know, the review or, 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 or the free Sprint Mini, I just, and Zill just enjoys your feedbacks and comments. It helps us improve the program, get the right content, and uh, it keeps us motivated to do a good job on this program. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, and talk to you soon.